Good morning and welcome to the Nonprofit Show. We are so glad you are here today. We have another fantastic guest from your part-time controller, or as we reference YPTC. Denzel Blunt is here. He's a CPA and he's also a manager at YPTC. He's here to bring uh, his expertise, his insights, and his tips to share with you all about federal grant and awards. So stay with us because Denzel has got such fabulous experience and expertise to share with us. But before we jump into the conversation with you, Denzel, we want to remind our viewers and our listeners across the globe who we are. So hello to you, Julia Patrick. Julia is the CEO at the American Nonprofit Academy. Thankfully for her, even six years ago, if you joined us for the Green Room Chatter, like the nonprofit show has been baking for quite some time. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so really, yeah. you know, four years here, um, we've nearly produced almost 900 episodes. And I'm so grateful to serve alongside as your co host. I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd and CEO of the Raven Group. And we are also so extremely grateful to our amazing presenting sponsors that allow us these opportunities to keep the airwaves open and the conversations flowing. So thank you to Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, again, where our guest Denzel joins us from, also Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraising Academy at National University, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, as well as Nonprofit Tech Talk. So again, thank you to these companies that allow us these fantastic conversations that continue to evolve over the years, the months, the quarters. And if you missed any of our previous episodes, or maybe you have to jump in late to this one or jump off a little early, either way, we've got you covered, my friend. So download the app. Just if you're watching right now, you can scan that QR code to the right on the visual and it will upload um, the, the app. And it will also let you know in just a couple of hours that the notification for today's conversation has been uh, placed. We're also on podcast and streaming broadcast. So we haven't left those platforms. We just keep, we keep adding, right? Adding, yeah. adding to the, to the streamline. So yeah, really excited to have these available for all of you free of charge. And again, thank you so very much. Denzel, so glad to have you. I love this photo of you. It looks just like you in IRL, you know, based off of this camera here. But again, Denzel Blunt, CPA manager at your part-time controller. Welcome to you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, fun fact about this professional photo is my first professional photo that's been taken in probably the last eight years. But my, my current LinkedIn photos are expired. I just took these at our most recent manager meeting, which subsequent was actually prior to, as you can see, my broken collarbone here. Yes. Well, well I it's... Go ahead, Julia. I like to think that you were like racing to the printer to get a return report, or you were like rappelling off the side of the office building to get to a client. Something oh, really fabulous. Oh, oh, Julia, if only it was that exciting. It's honestly much more embarrassing uh, than anything else. Uh, just my wife and I like to get active and play in a, a, a rec ultimate Frisbee league. and. Uh, Again, it's recreational, so it should not be that competitive, but I'm a little too competitive for my own good. So in the semifinal game, I uh, I was trying very hard to get a point and uh, fell awkwardly and subsequently broke my collarbone. But the good, the good news, the good news is we did win that game. I got the point and we won the championship. So it was all worth it. I love it. <laughs> so you, took no, I can... you took your trophy to like the emergency room with you? Well, it's 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 like an honorary frisbee that has champion on it. So yes, I, I carry it with me at all times. I love it. I love for someone who's competitive, even yeah. in musical chairs, I can relate. <laughs> I totally get it. Well, you have brought your wisdom to the conversation as we talk about federal grants, and I also want to reference a colleague of yours, Derek Dreer, that has joined us previously on the show to talk also about federal grants. So, you know, if you were listening when I mentioned that all of these are recorded and available to rewatch, go back into the archive and you can find Derek's conversation. But let's jump into this because as we look at funding for the year, I am really excited to learn from you because Julie and I have been in the sector for, for quite a while, but we always learn from our guests. Like we oh, always yeah. have this 
hair on fire, you know, yeah. mind blown kind of moment. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure you'll have one with us as well. Uh, but I'd love to hear you talk about the communication and what we should do and maybe not do when it comes to communication with our federal agencies or those grantors. What do you advise in this arena? Right, right. So I actually want to start this discussion off by asking a question just to okay. get you, you all thinking, get the audience thinking that if you have a federal grant and you run into a compliance issue or you have a question, who are you going to call? <laughs> Yeah. I, I, if you if if something comes up and you 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 feel like you don't know what the next compliance step is, who's that person you're going to call? Yeah. I'd say uh, a lot of people uh, will hesitate to call their federal granting agency, but in my experience, that is the best, the best person, the best group, the best agency, the best anything to call because they will have the most specific answers to any of the questions you have related to your grant compliance. So one of the best things that you can do when you have a federal grant, like as soon as you get that award letter, is to start talking to your uh, to your uh, negotiator or your your grant officer, because when you have rapport with your grant officer and you you start to realize, okay, this person is here to help me, so <laughs> maybe I can ask some questions when I I'm not sure which way to go. Yeah, uh, because I, I I can't I can't tell you how many times there have been situations where. Uh, a client or a nonprofit comes to your part of controller frantically saying, what do I do? What do I do? Yeah. And we tell them, well, have you asked your, your grantor? Because they know all the answers. Or I'll say most of the answers. <laughs> um, that, that's one of the well, key things you can start doing early is talking to your federal uh, yeah. grant officer and building that rapport so that when you do have those questions or concerns, you can just pick up the phone and talk to them. Do you find, I mean, obviously you do because you said, hey, have you, have you talked to the federal agency representative? Why are people hesitant? Yeah, and it's it's mostly because there's probably this stigma that like the federal government is this all overseeing compliance entity. And then if I make any mistake, it's going to result in, you know, I lose my grant or something like that. Uh, sure. But ultimately, these agencies are trying to help nonprofits administer programs for the community, right? Yeah. And so if... In, in, in my experience, anytime that there's a, I have a client or even back when I was a controller for a nonprofit, I needed to talk to somebody and try and get to get to the right answer. They were like, okay, we want to help you. We want to help you. Just give us the information that you're confused about and let's try and find that right answer. You know, I'm fascinated. And I think this is like, I love that you started this way, Denzel, is that it's like, you know, the minute you get that approval, you, that, that letter that says, okay, we're in, we're moving forward to make a call and reach out and begin the communication. Don't wait for a problem, but at least make that introduction. Um, I think that's just super wise because nobody wants to admit that they don't know something or they're worried or that maybe they, they're not in compliance, but yet if it's so much easier if we have some sort of communication path um, right. and know, know who to call. I mean, that's just kind of like common sense, but. I bet there are a lot of us out there that don't think that way. Yeah, and and I think uh, to add to that, Julia, is the if you are if you are worried that you're not in compliance, the best time to talk about it is on the front end with your uh, grant officer, rather than on the back end when auditor has come through and identified and reported out that you are not in compliance. So if you're able to get ahead of some of those issues, some of those questions, and take care of them and resolve them before an auditor comes in, then you don't have to worry about having those findings reported out to everybody to see uh, that you're not, may not be in compliance. Yeah, that's a great tip. And, really and who fun. should be that person to reach out? Should it be the CEO and executive director? Should it be maybe a development person that submitted the grant? Who should be the person that reaches out with that question? Right, that's a great question, and it, yeah. it may it may depend on how your organization handles kind of the grant application, uh, right. because what you'll generally see is that you'll have a development person who has the deep knowledge of the grant itself. So that person should definitely be involved in that conversation with the grant officer. But also, you, you should have I recommend having a finance person who also understands the numbers that it comes when it comes to the grants as well. So those those two coming together uh, and having that relationship will will make the grant management process a lot a lot smoother yeah Smart. 
So, I mean, one, I, I have a million questions, but before we move on, and this is going to seem like a little ridiculous, but when you talk about communications, are you saying like schedule a Zoom call, pick up the phone and email? Like what does your degree of engagement look like? Right, right. That's a great question. And it's really all of the above. Uh, you know, <laughs> okay. when, 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 when you when you get that uh, that award letter, is doing a nice little introductory email. But my recommendation is always to just pick up the phone and talk okay. to that person because that's the quickest way to kind of develop some of that rapport. Uh, ask any kind of lingering questions you might have just to you know help the uh, the officer understand your organization. So then when you are talking to them later, they're like, okay, this is, I understand this organization. I'm gonna help them deliver on their mission. So that having that conversation, building that rapport, I think in my experience, just picking up the phone and talking to your uh, to your officer is one of the best ways to do that. Yeah, great cool. tip. I, you know, I find that they really are, whether it's federal, city, you know, regardless of governmental, as well as down to your family, local foundations, those representatives, they really do want to help. Like they're on your side, right, to, to better support the community. And there's so much fear around and intimidation around making that contact. But I've always found they're really here to be helpful. Yeah, definitely. And, and if I can, I want to tell like a quick story about one of my favorite uh, grant officers uh, where uh, I had a, I was controller of a nonprofit. I had just started with them and we had a negotiated indirect cost rate proposal that was late by four years or something like that. And I, I had never done one before, so I had to figure out how to get it done. So I didn't know where to go. I was the highest level finance person in my organization. So I said, I have to call my my agency. And I, I worked with them very closely, put together the proposal to negotiate. And I said, how long is it going to take to get this process done? He said, well, really, it takes six months from submission. But but since I've already looked at it with you, I'm going to go ahead and just review it right now. So, you know, getting, like I said, getting that report can kind of help you when you're dealing with your agencies. And especially when, you know, when, if you do have something that you need to have reviewed by your agency, like if you're working with them together, they're able to be knowledgeable and understand it and not have to wait the, the, the necessary like six months of reviewing the documents individually and things like that. So having them help you along the process is something that will, I think, make the grant management process so much easier. Wow, I love it. Well, you speaking of review, um, one of the things you advise us to, I mean, you said, let's start with communication, such a basic, good way to do business no matter what. And I loved what Jarrett said. It's not just federal, it's down the municipal chain, it's through our foundations, it's through our investors and donors. But you really advise us to review those federal grant spending monthly issues. And talk to us about what that looks like. I mean, is this something that we might not even be reporting on, but you're still advising us to stay abreast of it? Yes, absolutely. So there are several levels of compliance to come with the federal grant, obviously. Mm -hmm. So the most basic one is going to be your grant spending. You're going to see how much did I spend under my grant and how much grant do I have remaining. But in addition to that, you could have some non-financial requirements that need to be reported out on a regular basis as well. So making sure you're reviewing even the non-financial pieces monthly with your teams will make sure, it will help you guarantee that you are in compliance throughout the entire year. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's really important to, uh, to definitely understand your monthly spending, but also understand your other monthly requirements that come with your grant. Mm -hmm. You know, Denzel, this is, this is a big one for me. And I, I would like to share what I call, you know, like I've seen so many emergencies where an organization, you know, hasn't reviewed their finances for these grants and, and to stay in compliance for months. Right. And so they're backlogged. Maybe it's a reimbursement contract, you know, slash grant, depending on how you label that. And I, I have seen what I, again, like horror stories of agencies not staying on top of this. So I love that you advise monthly. And I'm curious, who should we include in this review process? I mean, obviously accounting, anyone else should be part of this review cycle? 
Yes. So definitely you want to have accounting and finance involved in that conversation. You want to be reporting that to uh, your upper level management. So that could be your COO, your CEO. So they are up to date on the spending as well. Uh, but you also want to have your operations team uh, and or the program team that is dealing with that grant because they will ultimately be able to give the narrative pieces of compliance when it comes to that monthly reporting. Great mm -hmm. job. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't often see that happening, right? It's like it happens in this corner um, right. and it's not happening, you know, collectively with all of the players, if you will, of of the grant compliance. So I, I really appreciate that. Um, what other tips do you have when it comes to reviewing? You know, I mean, should this be a report that we share with the board as well? Yeah. So I, I want to take this from, from two angles. So say you are a nonprofit that uh, has federal grants. The one question you should be asking yourself throughout every year is, do I expect to spend 750,000 of federal dollars this year? Every year you should be asking yourself that question. And you should, if you're tracking monthly, you should know the answer to that question, right? And why 750,000? That's the threshold that will trigger a federal grant compliance audit automatically. And so uh -huh. it's, it's also each nonprofit's responsibility to report to their auditors that, hey, I need a compliant, additional compliance audit because I've met the threshold. Right. And so uh, going back to Jared, what you were saying earlier, many, many organizations who have horror stories or disasters or fires because they had below 750 and were really close in prior years, and they got an additional grant and pushed them over the threshold and they weren't thinking about oh, did we spend over the threshold? Do we need an audit? And then the auditors show up and say, oh my goodness, we have to do another audit on top of the one that we're already doing. So, so that's the expenditure in one fiscal year, if I'm, uh, correct me if I'm saying this wrong. Yeah, no, that's uh, a great question. Okay, of 750 or above, is that correct? That's correct. So in, within your fiscal year, whether you're, if you're on calendar year, if you're off the calendar year, within your fiscal year, if you have spent underline bold spent $750,000 or more in federal grants. And I emphasize the spent part because it's not how much you've been awarded. You could have a million dollar award and only spend yeah, 600000 yeah. of it in your period, in your fiscal year. So make sure you're understanding the spending of these grants because yes, that will trigger the federal audit. And that's an additional cost, right? That federal mm -hmm. audit. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You know, Jared, I think you said something and, and I it, it's triggered a question uh, that I want to ask Denzel. And this was a, you said so often, you know, not enough folks get involved in this process, but we really need to have people moving through our organization, understanding what this work is, is all about. I've got to ask you, Denzel, do you feel like maybe we haven't educated our teams up enough on how to look at these reports and what we should be understanding um, and that it's just easier to say oh let those guys over in accounting and finance do it because it seems to me that we have this like wall in between a lot of our different departments and that maybe that's the found a foundational point for why we're having some problems yeah that's a that's a great great point julia uh because and not just in the federal grants area, there's always this kind of intersection between finance and development, I think in particular, that is, is kind of this historical struggle of how do we get on the same page about, you know, the numbers. And because development is looking at it in one lens and then accounting is saying, well, according to generally accepted accounting principles, it has to look like this, you know? So like, it's uh, it's very important to to definitely bring all those players between accounting, development, operations into the same room on a regular basis to be talking about this reporting. Uh, and not just uh, not because not just because we want them to be friends, it's also because they all have key pieces in the grant management process. And if they aren't communicating, you know, it is going to be difficult and you, there are more opportunities for pitfalls to occur. And and to your point, Julie, about are we training our teams well enough to understand these reports? And that is a challenge. That is a really big challenge uh, because if you're, say, for example, new to a federal award or new to a, a, an award with this agency, like that, that could be completely different than the awards you have with other agencies. And so you may have someone 
you may have someone who reads the agreement in finance and understands it, you know, from a financial perspective, but they may not be able to develop that narrative that operations or programs would be able to do. And so without that communication, or at least even like having, I, I had one nonprofit had, had a great tracking system. They had like a, it, it was very simple. They took an Excel spreadsheet and put all of the non-financial and financial requirements, I tagged them with finance programs development. Uh -huh. And on a, on at least a monthly basis, they would sit down and walk through that to make sure they were, everyone understood their responsibilities. Yeah, that's really important. And another shout out to a YPTC colleague, Deanna was on uh, to talk to us about exactly, you know, some symbiotic relationships between finance and fundraising and how you can really work in a cohesive manner, right? To see those, to see those numbers. So really interesting insight. Let's move to negotiate because when I see this word negotiate for a federal grant, I think that doesn't belong. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I was too. I was like, wait, I thought that was before the grant. You can't do this. Yeah. So, so talk to us about yeah. this, uh, you know, especially perhaps that raise to federally approved rates, which is a story you shared with us about your own personal experience. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Definitely. And so this is, this is something that, uh, Particularly, particularly if you're new to grants, may sound scary, right? Like it goes back to communicating and the stigma around that. But ultimately, the federal government assumes a 10% indirect rate on all their grants. I'm going to ask another question here to get people thinking as well. Do I know what my organizational indirect rate is? Because if it's higher than 10%, that means you're going to be losing money on indirect costs on your grant. Right. And so that's why I, I highly recommend uh, to try working to negotiate uh, uh, indirect approved indirect cost rate with your uh, granting agency. And so that will allow you to essentially calculate your rate so you know exactly what it is, show it to the agency and say, hey, this is how we calculate our rate. Can you approve us to get this? reimbursement for at this rate, our actual rate for our grants. And the agency will review it and they'll either give you some comments or go back and forth about how to calculate the rate and ask you some questions. But ultimately the work that it takes to get an ind a negotiated indirect cost rate is worth it. Because not only does it allow you to, to recoup more indirect costs, it also gives you more negotiating power with other agencies also uh, state sure. and local agencies. Because once you have the federal government saying, hey, we're willing to pay you and we've reviewed in detail your indirect cost calculation, then state and local agencies will look at, at, look at that as well and say, oh, if the federal government will do it, we'll, we'll right. honor it as well, right? right. And then other oh, agencies- fascinating. And even in other agencies within the federal government will see that rate and they will honor that also. Wow. So it gives you, even, even if you, don't find it that you're going to use it on all your grants. It at least gives you more negotiating power uh, when it comes to other grants as well. So definitely, definitely worth it to uh, try and get that rate negotiated. And I got to ask you this. I mean, our country, the costs across this wide country, it's so varied. I mean, the cost of operating a nonprofit in the West versus the East, the North, the South, depending on the weather. I mean, you know, this country's in a major heat wave. Think of the, the number of nonprofits that are going to struggle to pay even the bare minimums of their utilities during this, this summer. I mean, how often do we do this? How often do we, we examine this? Because this is a pretty arduous task. Right, right. It's a great question. And so once you get a negotiated indirect cost rate agreement or a NICRA uh, with the federal government, you have to review that on an annual basis. <clears throat> and so what the requirement is, is uh, six months following your fiscal year end, you're going to sum submit your uh, NICRA calculation, your indirect cost calculation, uh, and they will review it again and approve you for a new rate for the following year. And they'll give you even provisional rates for subsequent years that you can use uh, until you know you get to those points of negotiating those other rates. So you, you it gives you some options for for your future rates that you can use. Mm -hmm. 
my gosh. All the more reason to yes. partner with YPTC. Uh, federal grants, I, I think I might have done definitely less than a handful. Um, they're not my favorite. I think I shared that with Derek when he was on as well. And I, right? and I like, love federal grants. They are, I absolutely <laughs> love working with federal grants. See, and this is fantastic. Because there's something out there for everyone. And uh, so, yeah, I, I really appreciate this. I, I find it, um, back to your word, Julia, right? Like very arduous. It's, mm -hmm. um, for me, it's a heavy lift. It's certainly not my zone of genius, but it sounds like it's yours and definitely some other colleagues at YPTC such great information. Um, you know, I know we're wrapping up, but I, I know that there's a lot of organizations that have potentially see, seen a huge influx of funding during the pandemic, um, ARPA funding, you know, all the, the COVID CARES Act. And then now they're kind of like starting to, to go the opposite direction. <laughs> and so I do think if I had my crystal ball, Julia, um, <laughs> that we talk about often, like Denzel, if you had a crystal ball, what would you forecast? <laughs> I do think that many nonprofits will start pursuing more federal opportunities than perhaps they have in the past. Yeah, I agree. Um, because of the shortfall. And so thank you, Denzel, for, for being here, showing up, providing this insight, really, really good information. Yes, no problem, no problem. And thank you for having me, even though you know I'm I'm not my full self as I normally would be. I'm very excited to be here with both you, uh, Jared and Julia. So I Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh my gosh. No, you've been a trooper. I, I love that we could tease you about being, you know, an accounting superhero. Um, but I do love that competitive spirit that you even went to the emergency room with the, you know, award, the uh Yeah, but we won the championship. So I carry I carry that disc that disc with me everywhere. I love it. <laughs> I'm gonna say you were like sliding into the deadline for the federal grant application because those deadlines are no joke. Yes, yeah. I think mean, that's true. I think that's you might have to tweak your story a little bit, Denzel. Yeah, yeah. And, I think yeah. I think that the deadline one is good. That's definitely something that yeah. we're trying to, we're trying to break. Was, I think that makes sense. Before the like, you know, steel doors just slam <laughs> shut. <laughs> I love it. I think that's a good thing. Well, Denzel Blount, CBA manager, your part-time controller. Um, really, a fascinating conversation today because I agree with you, Jarrett. I think that, I mean, I'm hearing it, you know, from the folks that I talk to, people that were like, oh, we don't do federal grants that are now like, you know, kind of looking like knocking at on that door. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And I think, you know, that we need to have these conversations because it is one of those paths that we're going to start to be seeing more and more. And as we get more comfortable, then, of course, I think there are more options. And so. Uh, Denzel, thank you for sharing that with us. And, and we look forward to getting you back on to explore this a little bit more, because again, I think this is going to be a topic that we're going to hear more and more about. And it's a changing topic. Hey, everybody, again, if we hadn't met before, I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of American Nonprofit Academy. I've been joined today by the nonprofit nerd herself, Jared R. Ransom, CEO of The Raven Group. Again, we are here nearly 900 episodes strong due to the investment from our folks. And we were talking in the in the green room, really Eric Frank, um, one of the founders of YPTC uh, in the dead of summer in a three piece wool suit said something to Jared and I about, how do I get my logo on the screen? And it kind of kicked us off in a way that it's really interesting. So. <laughs> But again, thank you to Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy at National University, Nonprofit Thought Leader, your part-time controller, Nonprofit Tech Talk, Nonprofit Nerd, and Staffing Boutique. These are the folks that join us day in and day out so we can deliver these messages and, and learning. You know, that's one of the wonderful things about this journey with you, Jarrett. Um, we really, every, every day I learn something new. I mean, today, you know, Denzel rocked my world on some things um, that it's fascinating. I mean, every day there's something new to learn. Yeah, I learned I could negotiate after the grants approved. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the NICRA. I mean, I think that's really an interesting thing. And we need to be talking more about that and, and building our confidence. I mean, in the nonprofit sector, we work so hard to achieve our mission, vision, and values. But yet we can't get there if we don't have this back, you know, this foundational piece of it. And so 
um, to get this information and, and build this confidence so that we can navigate our, our nonprofits uh, with better stewardship is where we need to go. Really, really important. Okay, my friend, well, we need to let you get off so you can go into physical therapy, right? That's exactly where I'm going, yep. <laughs> <laughs> It's not like just doing the calculator. Not not quite like that. <laughs> all right. Well, we're going to stop teasing you because that's just not fair. But it's all fun. <laughs> but you're going to appreciate the way we sign off every episode of the nonprofit show. And so this goes out to you, Denzel. And that is the message to stay well so you can do well. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Thank you, everybody.